No, I haven't gone insane. The title is correct. In my opinion, Rogel Dawn has defeated Chaos. This makes him officially the greatest loyalist Primarch that has ever lived in the Warhammer lore setting. Now, before we delve down into this hole of brand new Warhammer lore, I'm going to have to give a huge spoiler warning. We're going to be covering the Siege of Terror series, specifically the End of the Death, part one and part two. So if you're currently reading those books, if you don't want to be spoiled, leave the video right now. This is your first and only Warning. Now, to understand how Dawn actually defeated Chaos, we have to go back to the beginning. And the beginning is the Emperor, Sanguinius, Valdor, all the retinue that went aboard the Vengeful Spirit. What happened to each individual is a different story in itself. The Emperor was ambushed, or he was taken, well, the custodians were taken over he went with, and they ambushed him. Sanguinius is fighting through hordes of uh, demons, chaos space marines, even a ghost Primarch turns up. We'll discuss that in another video. But Rogel Dawn, for me, was given the worst fate of them all. This is why I keep saying Dawn has suffered the most because Rogel Dawn was transported not to the vengeful spirit, he was transported to a desert. A desert which was basically a prison. A desert which has his sons stacked towers high, dead bodies everywhere. The decay of time slowly ticking away and there's no one there. And he suffered this through centuries. Not a couple of seconds, not a couple of minutes like all the others went through. Dawn has been locked away in this cage in timeless decay and it started to affect his mind this is what people don't understand about rogel dawn he is endurance manifest he cannot be broken down even though he's been locked away on this desert planet for hundreds upon hundreds maybe even thousands of years because like i said time is just not there he still never bowed down to chaos because while he was in this prison there was a voice on the air, a demonic voice that was slowly trying to chip away at the Rogel Dawn Foundation. But we all know that the Imperial Fist dig their foundations deep and strong. So even though this voice was saying things, trying to goad Dawn, saying stuff like, say it, Dawn, say it, blood for the what? Blood for the who? And there was a little bit of a time where Dawn maybe broke down just a small fraction and the words were uttered, blood father, and then it was fully cut off in the book and people were sending me a bunch of messages calling him Rogel Khan, Dawn has fallen, no wonder you like Khan Varak, etc, etc, etc. No, Dawn stood tall because he defeated Chaos by being rogel dawn now how did rogel dawn defeat the powers of chaos you may ask by being rogel dawn i'll tell you how he basically talked to them and it was one of the most amazing scenes in the world a lot of people dislike how this went down but i absolutely love it because this is rogel dawn a hundred percent so dawn's trapped in this desert, right? And, you know, he's like I said, his sons are mounted up. It's literally hell for him. And every couple of a hundred years, the voices return, trying to turn him to the powers of Khan, to try and unleash Dawn. Dawn's this strategist, and it's like, I know you want to fight, Dawn. I know you want to unleash your rage. Just do it. And Dawn basically just started talking back about the history of mankind. Like on the sixth day, um, uh, the philosophers of um, um, Chilipoli um, built the foundations of the very, very noble court of law. So basically, he was just reciting this stuff back to the chaos voices and the chaos voices were getting so frustrated with rogel dawn and what he was talking about technically right i i do get on this train technically you can say rogel dawn defeated chaos by the power of boredom he bored the, he bored the chaos powers to ultimate 
death. That is how he technically won his matchup versus uh, the powers of Khan trying to um, convince him to betray um, the Emperor. But I see it, I don't see it like that. It's it, it's Dawn sticking to his path, talking what he knows and not listening to other outside sources. Dawn does what Dawn does. He is the unbreakable, the unmovable object. No matter how much time you have, no matter how much resources you have, you will not move Dawn from the path he set himself in. Now, during the book, Dawn does actually escape from this prison, but that's a whole story in itself because that's down to the Emperor of Mankind and something called the Dark King, which I will do a video on and cover because that is huge, massive new lore, which is, I think it's going to echo and have ramifications in the current 40k lore if I think some of the theories that I have in my mind turn out to be true. But Dawn basically is out the prison now and we're moving Moving on to the third and final book in the Siege of Terror series, which of course is the End and the Death Part Three, and this is going to be the emotional one because, of course, at the end uh, at the end of the End and the Death Part Two, we had the death of Sanguinius by Horus. The Emperor is moving towards um, Horus for the final showdown, and we all know that it's Rogel Dawn that finds his father's body. Or oh, that was the old law, and he literally carries him to the Golden Throne, and the Emperor gives his final command to Rogel Dawn. Maybe some stuff is going to change in that. We're not really too sure, but I think it's going to be very, very emotional. Um, Dawn has already suffered um, the most. Again, I said at the start, he's been locked away for thousands of years, seeing piles of his dead sons, the, 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 the decay of time, whispers trying to break him down. He's gone through so much already. So that next couple of steps now going forward on the Vengeful Spirit to see the Emperor, to see the Imperial Dream shattered, to see his brother Horus become what he's become, this is going to be absolutely emotional for Rogel Dawn. And I cannot wait for every second of it to see what finds out and we can come back and we can talk about the actual end of the siege of terror um sometime next year february if i'm not mistaken right that's enough waffling from me as always thank you for coming thank you for watching um rogel don the official beta of chaos by the power of rogel don talking you can't make it up. Well, you can because it's all made up. But yes, Dan Abnett confirmed that Rogel Dawn is his favorite Primark. And of course, Rogel Dawn was the one to um, defeat Chaos. Uh, can, can I just add, by the way? Can, can I literally just add? Horus fell because he had a nightmare. Fulgrim fell because he talked to his sword. Pertrabo fell because he couldn't build a pavement, right? The little loser, right? All these Primarchs. Logar fell because everyone who did a magic trick was considered a god. Logar was on his knees like the entire heresy, just bowing down to everyone. But Rogel Dawn, no. He was firm. He did not stray the path. This is why Dawn cannot be broken. This is why the Imperial Fist are the most loyal sons of the Emperor. We cannot be broken. See ya. Have a great day and bye-bye.